Okay, welcome back everybody. It is your favorite vampire, Aveline here. And we're back with more murder on the Orient Express. As we know last time, we went through and just it, talking to suspects and everything. Just trying to figure out who's right-handed, who's left-handed. We found out some very interesting things. And now we are back to Joanna Locke waking up. So, let's pull up a chair, relax, and let's put our little grey cells to work, shall we? Now we left off with Joanna Locke coming back. To tell the parents, unfortunately, that their daughter died. Here we go. Still love you, microids, for doing this. Like... Oh, boy. Nobody's touched anything. I mean, I don't blame them. If something were to happen, like... If something were, like, if I had kids, and something were to happen to, like, my kid, hypothetically, I wouldn't really touch anything. You. Hello, Miss Morrow. I'm here to see Colonel Armstrong. Good morning, Detective. Colonel Armstrong is upstairs. He, he isn't well. Well, I'm not surprised. I mean, he just found out that his daughter is dead, and you knew something about it. But instead of t coming forward and telling the police anything, you kept quiet. I'm mad at you. I shouldn't be. But it's like... Can I talk to you? No, I can't. The Armstrongs have a taste for modern art. Yeah, they do. Practically become a shrine, a memorial. You! I am so mad at you. I hope that your guilty conscience eats at you. I don't like being mean. Oh, hi, kitty. Hello, Lucy. As we recall, the last part with Joanna, we called the cat Lucy. Because she reminds me of my Mina. However, um, I have a Mina, so I called her Lucy. For anybody that gets the reference, it's like based off of Bram Stoker's Dracula. Mina's name is actually short for Wilhelmina Harker. I go in here. Why am I going back into the nanny's room again? Oh, see if she, you know, hit anything. Go in there. Can I go in there? No. Can't go in there. I'm pretty sure he's in uh, Daisy's room. And nothing there. I can still access Daisy's room. Let me see if I can access this door. No, of course not. Nothing's been touched. It's as if Daisy might walk in at any moment and begin to play. Yeah. Might as well go ahead and talk to him. Good morning, Colonel Armstrong. Is your wife here? Here? No, Sonia is not here. Always one step behind. She died of a miscarriage last night. My wife, Daisy, and our baby. My whole family is gone. I... I'm so sorry. I came straight here this morning. I received word that you can 
arrange for Daisy to be returned to you for burial. I didn't know. Well, then, now you don't have to come back. I can arrange for Daisy, my wife, and our unborn child to be buried all at once. Very efficient. Being a military man, I can appreciate efficiency. I know how hard this must be for you. No, you don't know. I don't want your sympathy. I want you to do your bloody job and catch the creature that did this. I know you won't believe me, but I swear to you, I will find who did this. If it takes me to the far corners of the earth, I will find them. Then go. Please go now. Go find them. Oof. Oof. I don't blame The house him. that once held the laughter of a child now feels so empty. I don't blame him for being angry, because now we find out that the wife died from a miscarriage. I'm not giving up. I'm a part of this case. Or the case is a part of me. And you. I'm mad at you. You still withhold evidence. Oh. Goodbye, Lucy. This may be the last time I see you. I'll say goodbye to the cat. Not goodbye to the nanny. I'm just, I'm stewing right now. Cases with kids All aren't easy. Hike is in the vicinity of the cabin where Daisy Armstrong was found, spotted a pickup truck drive through the barricade tape, and then head up the dirt road toward where the subject cabin is located. Any car nearby who can respond? Unit 28. We can respond, but we're a ways away. Dispatch, this is Eleven. I'm on it. Copy that. Eleven, you good to go. Copy that. Okay. So now we got somebody returning to the scene of the crime, do we? What do you have to gain from this, huh? Huh? Cases with kids are always hard. March 30th, 2019, 2 p.m. Alright. Okay, there's the pickup. Let's see who ignored our barricade tape. Yeah, let's see indeed. Eleven here. I'm at the cabin. Someone has broken in. Are you requesting backup? Not yet. I'm going to take a look around. Copy that, Eleven. Okay. So I could just stroll right in, or I could come over to the pickup and take a- An individual has entered a police secured area. I have to stop him first. Cool. All right. Footprints. A forensics evidence identification marker. Forensics had to go through this place with a fine tooth comb. Not surprised. All right. Where are you? A forensics evidence identification marker. Duct tape to silence Daisy's screams. Damn it, Daisy. I will find whoever did this to you. Cool. All right. Oi! He's not here. Ninety-two. Oh, when the poor deer was killed. There better not be anything else in this room. That's where I found Fluffy. Daisy's special toy. I hope we returned him to the family. I hope so too. If I have to put down the game for a brief second, I will. Because, like, cases with kids, it's just... It's hard. It really is. Somebody ignored the barricade tape. Somebody had something to fucking hide. Alright, where are y'all? You 
back here. Better not be another trap. The hell? Who's there? Don't shoot, officer. I'm on your side. Sir, keep your hands where I can see them. Sure, no problem. Sir, this is a crime scene. Who the hell are you? I'm a reporter. Boston 6 News. You can get us on cable even here in the mountains. They haven't heard of crime scene tape in a big city like Boston? All right. That wasn't my best move. I got all excited. I didn't expect to find the place deserted. It was hard to resist. You should have tried harder. I'm placing you under arrest. You should be thanking me. Look what you apparently missed and I found. We'll get to that, but you're going to answer some questions first. I'm more used to asking questions, but fire away. All right, let's start off with the basic one. Who are you? Who are you exactly? I'm Michael Clark, journalist for Boston 6 News. Off camera, but someday I'm going to be anchor. You just wait. Do you have a way to prove that? My press card's in my truck. What are you doing here? You should know a crime scene is off limits. I'm investigating the Daisy Armstrong kidnapping like you. Does the pickup parked in front of the cabin belong to you? Yes, indeed, it's mine. I'll check. Show me your hands. I'm going to cuff you. I'm sure we can work out a deal. Put your hands in front of you. Aren't you going to read me my rights? You have the right to remain silent. I really wish you'd exercise that one. Dispatch, this is Eleven. I intercepted a suspicious individual at the crime scene. I'll check to determine how badly he's compromised it. Then I'm bringing him in. Copy that, Detective Locke. All right. So. Clark's press card, and the phone number of the newspaper is on it. Ah, good. I can give him a call. Cool. All right. Hmm. The glove compartment is closed. Ooh. That's camera. Okay. Candid photos of the entire Armstrong family. A reporter just doing his job. Or something else? Hmm. Hmm. I can't pull out the keys. Can I? Oh, hello. <laughs> I don't know necessarily what I'm supposed to be doing with this shit. Okay, but there is something I am supposed to be doing with it. I guess. I'll figure that out in a second. Telephoto lens. Not so surprising for a journalist.
Hmm. The glove compartment is closed. <laughs> Car keys in the sun visor. A classic hiding place. Well, at least on TV. Okay. And there we go. And... Clerk's driver's license seems to be in order. And then what's this? The vehicle registration is not in the name of Michael Clark or a rental company. Hmm. Okay, so just trying to barely read it. Six one seven six one. Eight, and I want to say that's seven. Got it. That is a great detective job. I love the close-ups. Hi, I'm Detective Joanna Locke, Berkshire Police. I'd like to speak to an editor, please. One moment, please. Hello, Detective Locke? This is Abby Wilson. I'm a senior editor. What can I do for you? Does a man named Michael Clark work for you? Yes, he does. Why? When was the last time you heard from him? Oh, it's been at least seven or eight months. That's not unusual. He works in the field? Yes, Michael Clark is what we call a stringer. He works as a freelancer. Comes up with a story we can use, we pay him. Then we don't hear from him again for several months. What kind of stories does Mr. Clark write? Mr. Clark is an investigative reporter. Mostly crime stories, to tell you the truth. He comes up with some pretty macabre stuff some of the time. Is there a problem? Our story. Do you remember what the last case he investigated was? It was a murder case. The victim was a millionaire named James Miller. He was called the Frozen Fish King of Gloucester, Massachusetts. His body turned up in one of his nets. Or, rather, most of it did. Ah, well. Thank you, Ms. Wilson. You've been a great help to me. Pleasure. I hope he's not in trouble. He can be a little pushy, but he's a good guy overall. So what's he working on now, Detective? Are you sitting on a story? Thanks again. Okay, so that confirms that Michael, who's sitting in the back of our police car, is a good guy. This outline is the same shape and size as the gasoline can. Ooh, Michael, what have you been up to? Alright, well, there's nothing else here at the moment. Michael! I don't need to talk to the suspect right now. No. Really sure about that? I don't need to talk to the suspect right now. Really sure about that, Joanna? I don't like it. So. Well, we got him pretty much cuffed up, so might as well. And plus, we couldn't necessarily find this place because, like, it was dark when we got here. Okay. Oh, 
you got to be kidding me. Wait a minute. I wonder. Yes! I knew I could do it. I can always use safe cracking as a career move. You gotta be kidding me. You have got to be kidding me. There. Now let's see what secrets you're hiding. So, before we actually go in there, I'm curious about this gas can. Where is it? Because it's missing. There's a gas can missing. So... I wonder if I go in here. Because I could have sworn I'd seen one in here. Okay, so... Yep. Alright then. Unless I can actually go to the other side? I get into the vehicle still? No? This outline is the same shape and size as the gasoline can. Cool. Yeah. There's a toolbox, there's a tire. There's gotta be something more to it, but I don't think I'll find it out until I, like, figure out what's in the bunker. Oh, hey, is there anything over here? Oop. Down into the bunker we go. Oh, hello. Well... This must be the missing can from the pickup. Well, well, well. What have we here? The cap's been damaged. And some gasoline has leaked out. It also looks like that there's some patches down here. Oh, joy. Okay. Oh. Oh, it's one of these puzzles. I'm good at these puzzles. Somewhat. I think I have to get all of them to light up. Or I have to get the right one to light up is what I need to do. Okay, okay, no big deal, no big deal. But more than anything, I can get it. There's also... Another one over here. But more than anything, I can figure it out. Gotta figure out the right one. This bunker looks like it's as old as the cabin. Everything is falling apart. Ooh. Well, what do you know?
Hmm, no, it doesn't work. Okay. I think I gotta figure it now out. Now what? I have to turn the power back on to open this magnetic door. So. Let's see. We have three sets of wires. Alright. So. Alright. So this is actually going to... I wonder... Let's try that one. Now let's also take a look over here. Nothing but tools. Oh, hey, a blueprint. This blueprint. It looks like the bomb in the cabin. The kidnapper built the bomb here. Oh, joy. Oh, oh, joy. That explains that. I'm taking a bit of a guess here. Mostly because I don't really and truly want to, like, do a lot of the work. Even though I probably should. I mean, it's not like Nancy Drew. Hmm. No, it doesn't work. At least the one thing, at least it's not like Nancy Drew where you have to worry about... Like, you have to worry about all the consequences and crap. Hmm, no, it doesn't work. Okay, come on now. Uh, I don't want to put in any work in this puzzle, but I have to. Okay, so we'll follow this one. Alright, so it's going to be... One right there. And then we're just following it and following it and following it. There we go. So that one should be pretty easy. We're just following this one all the way. Dun, 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 dun. Actually, going to be. That one. Okay, so let's give this a shot. Let there be light. Yes! Yas, bitch! I did it! I fucking did it! All 
Alright, well before we do this, let's go upstairs and chit chat with dear Michael. I'm pretty sure I can talk to him about the gas can. What was he doing with it? I don't need to talk to the suspect right now. Oh, come on! I don't need to go through the doggone automatic door, do I? Uh, I don't like this. Because usually in all Nancy Drew games that I've played, when you open one door, you tend to get locked in the room. Well, at least it's not like... Perfect, it works. I still don't like this place. February 24th. The day of the kidnapping. They knew about the party and everything. So they knew about the party. Oh, boy. Oh, it's one of these ones. I'm pretty sure, like, I can't hear anything. There we go. This will definitely make this a little easier. isn't the right combination. Of course it's not. <sighs> because unfortunately, I turned right. I should turn left. Okay. So we know it's five. One. Seven. Three. Yes! I knew I could do it. I can always use safe cracking as a career move. That's one of the things I do like. Like, I do like the sound-based puzzles. Alright, what's in here? It's Daisy's hair clip, the same as the picture I saw at the Armstrong house. An expensive looking pen with the initials JM? What's its story? That looks like a hair caught in the band around the money. Forensics will tell me for sure, but that doesn't look like Daisy's color. These get locked up again until forensics get here. Okay, time for forensics to attack that bunker. And Clark? He's too sure of himself. I need to get him into an interrogation room and find out what really makes him tick. Cool. I bet you more than anything. Okay, so I'm not getting locked I'll in. secure the bunker for forensics. Progress at last. Good. Well, let's hope Michael hasn't, like, pulled an escape move just yet. Because now I got plenty to grill you. I know my rights. 
You can't keep somebody locked up in a car like this, you know. You wouldn't do it if I was a dog. Do they have bathrooms at the station? Dude, you should probably should have thought about that before you uh before you came up here. Oh, he's making me mad. Making me real mad. I have the right to make a phone call, Detective whatever your name is. That phone is an outside line. Hello, boss. It's Michael Clark. I'm still on the Armstrong kidnap, but there's a small problem. I got caught being someplace I shouldn't be. I'm at the police station. No, I'm not under arrest. Just questioning. Fire me. Why? The station's integrity? You're kidding me, right? If you think I've screwed up that badly, then fire me. Got that? Fire me. Yes, do it. That didn't go well. I think I got my point across. What happens now? Go ahead. Then we'll have a chat. Probably should have thought before you broke in, bud. Hmm. Just want to walk around. Check the place out. Ooh. I'll grab him here. Case files. A lot of them for our tiny town. Surprise. The only comfortable chair in the whole station. But there's no time to rest. I'll add these to the file. Anything that will erase Clark's smile. Cool. So there's his fingerprints. An extra computer so I don't have to go all the way out to my desk. This is all a game to him, and he doesn't expect to lose. I don't know. Granted, you're right about the dude. Like, being uber confident. Alright, let's go ahead with this interrogation, shall we? It's too bad I don't have a partner, then I couldn't play- then I could play p good cop, bad cop. <laughs> bad joke, I know. Now that we've taken your DNA, we can begin. Interview of suspect Michael Clark, 6 p.m., March 30th, 2019. This interview is being recorded. By elves behind the mirror, no doubt? You were arrested at a crime scene where you damaged police barricade tape. I'll pay for a new roll. That's a Class A misdemeanor, and it carries a $500 fine. Oh, that's unfortunate. To begin with, where were you on the night Daisy Armstrong was kidnapped? I was watching TV in my motel room but I had my police scanner on. I heard the first reports that the little girl was missing. No way the police at the scene were gonna let me get close. I set my alarm so I could get on the story first thing in the morning and tried to sleep. It was difficult. Can anybody confirm where you were? No, afraid not. I was alone and sleepless, a sad combination. And I realized a bad alibi. Uh huh. Yeah, a really bad alibi. with this let's start with why you went to the cabin if the police were interested in it i was interested in it what is the most relevant topic how did you find the cabin police radio i heard the forensic team getting directions then when they finally left the scene late this morning i jumped in my pickup and hurried on up the mountain 
You tore the tape at the entrance to the property and stomped all over the house. This constitutes a serious violation of a crime scene, Mr. Clark. I'm aware of that. I'm sorry. I'll pay the fine. But I got carried away. It isn't often I get a crime scene all to myself. He's enjoying himself. I need to throw him off balance somehow. Surprise him into making an error. Explain to me again how you got to the crime scene. I listened in on the police radio frequency. Anybody can do it with a scanner. I headed for the crime scene in my trusty pickup, like I've done for years. After the forensic team left, I needed to see the crime scene for myself. I got to the bunker just before you arrived. Mm -hmm. You said you've been driving that pickup for years? You heard right. Thanks to it, I never miss a story. Nah, you're lying, dude. You say you've been using your pickup for years, but the title certificate is not in your name. The truck belongs to somebody named Stephen Baker. Okay, I don't get why the pickup is so important to you, but I guess my ego made me say that. Yeah, the pickup was lent to me by a friend. I couldn't afford it even with a loan. I think you stole it, Mr. Clark. You needed a pickup like that for our mountain roads, so you stole that one. Try proving it. But while you run off on some wild goose chase, you can't hold me. Mm. Go ahead. Carson. You say you're a journalist, a stringer for Channel 6 News in Boston. I sell my stuff to lots of media outlets. How is your editor doing? Last time we spoke, she was fine. But that was months ago. What's her name again? I, um, I work for lots of stations and lots of editors. She knows your name, but you don't remember hers? I'm not great with names. It's Kelly Johnson. Oh yeah, Kelly. I just made that name up. Good for you. Her name is Abby Wilson. Mr. Clark, you lie like you breathe. Huh, well that was mean. He thinks he's invincible. I need to play his ego. That's the key. What are you doing in the Berkshires? And what is your connection to the Armstrong case? For the past few months, I've been working on a big case. Boston 6 News was looking forward to my next story. The Armstrongs have been on my list of potential targets for a long time. I changed gears when Daisy was kidnapped and started investigating the Armstrongs. I need proof, not guesswork. Okay, that doesn't work. I don't see anything that proves he's lying. Where is a lie detector when you need one? So you just stumbled on a major kidnapping story during your stay in the Berkshires. Yeah, I was researching PCBs in the river for crying out loud. Then, wow, the Armstrongs. That's not a Science Sunday report, that's a lead. Sometimes you just get lucky. Mm. Your camera in the pickup. There were photos of Daisy from before she was kidnapped. The Armstrongs are a famous family like the Kennedys or Hollywood couples. Gossip sites love them. People want to see how they live. I started out just stealing candid shots. Paparazzi live on getting that one exclusive shot. Steamy, intimate, whatever. Then when the kidnapping happened, I realized I was here first. What an opportunity, and I jumped at it. You have an answer for everything. You're not very good at this, are you? How long have you been on the job? Long enough to put you away for life, if you killed that little girl. There's one last thing. How do you explain the gas can? Let's move on to the gas cans and what we found in your pockets when you were brought in here today. That sounds exciting. How did you know there was a bunker at the end of the property? How did your forensic team miss it? 
They were concentrated on the cabin. It was pitch black out there. Small town cops with small town minds. I'm sorry, that was unkind. You know, I'm a bit like you. My job is to find something a news program's viewers want to see. You do it for justice. I do it for money. I just have more flair than you. I know you're lying, Mr. Clark. I followed your footprints from the cabin, and they led directly to the bunker. It was very well hidden. You had to know it was there. Think whatever you want, detective. I know that Clark is lying. I need to reconstruct the whole sequence of events in order to understand what happened. All right, then. We put that at the end. And we know Cl the bunker was closed when we met Clark. And we know he had to have broken the police tape. As well as open the bunker. I'm not sure about the gas can. Come on, Joanna. That's a rookie mistake. I wonder. Breaks the police tape, grabs the gas can on the way, opens the bunker. There we go. Yes! That is a great detective job. Yes! There we I'll go. I'll tell you what really happened. You waited until forensics left and arrived in your probably stolen pickup. You grabbed a can of gasoline from your truck. You then went into the cabin to check if Daisy had been found. You then went straight to the bunker to see if it had been discovered, planning to set it on fire and destroy all the evidence inside. Before you could start the fire, you heard me arrive. So you hastily left your gas can and closed the hatch. You didn't think I could open the bunker. If I hadn't found you, I expect you would have burned down the cabin too. I'm not gonna make fun of you, detective, or how you handled my interrogation. You're obviously very new at this. I swear I'm telling the truth. I didn't know the bunker was there until the moment you showed up. I seem to have trumped your entire police force. When I get the DNA results from the bunker, we'll continue this conversation. You have no concrete evidence against me whatsoever. The lab results will be in soon. You won't get away with this. See that call? That's your arrest warrant and a one-way ticket to prison. I'll be right back. Dude, you're about to get it. Hello, sir. I think I found the man who kidnapped Daisy Armstrong. I'm interrogating him now. Hold on, Detective Luck. I have some bad news. Someone set fire to the cabin in the bunker. The fire department is on the scene, but they say it's too late. Th that's impossible. My suspect has been in the interrogation room with me all evening. We can't hold him. Suzanne Moreau. Her fingerprints are on the wine bottle found in the cabin. We also found an unknown person's fingerprints, but they don't match your suspects. Sir, with all due respect, I'm convinced Michael Clark is involved. Detective, I'm cutting you some slack already. But we cannot hold your suspect simply because you're convinced he's guilty. We have evidence that Suzanne was working with an accomplice, Noah Garrity. I order you to release the reporter and arrest this Moreau. L let me just check my last lead. The DNA analysis of the hair found in the bunker safe. The results just came in. I know how hard this is. I... Okay. Get the DNA results. Detective Locke, I will give you one hour maximum. Then you close the file and arrest Suzanne Moreau. Thank you, sir. Okay. Well... So, Clark was in the interrogation room the entire time. Somebody set fire to both the bunker and the cabin. Now, for you, I'm getting mad. I'm getting extremely mad. Who did you call earlier? An editor from the Boston 6 News. An editor you repeatedly said should fire you. That was your accomplice, wasn't it? You were telling him to start the fire. An accomplice? I know it was Noah you called. I'm saying nothing more without the presence of my lawyer. Stay right where you are. 
I'm not done with you yet. Wow. Do I hear grounds for a lawsuit? Some poor, innocent woman is being accused instead of you. You set her up, didn't you? You have to let me go, detective. All I need is one more phone call to the lab. I know it's you, and I'm going to prove it. Hello, this is Joanna Locke. I need the results of the DNA test I asked you for. Hi, detective. Sorry, we only have the DNA sequence. We haven't had time to compare it with the suspects yet. It'll take seven more hours. I'm sorry, but you are not the only one on the waiting list. Send your analysis to my computer in the office. I'll do the comparison myself. I need authorization. I have a murderer who is going to walk free unless I get those results now. Fine, we'll send it to you right away, but I'll have to log this. Of course you do. It's my last chance. Of course you do. That's a problem now, isn't it? Okay. So. Unknown cabin. Unknown DNA found in the cabin. Oh, so it's one of those puzzles. Okay. So, what it is is that we have to like match it. match part of the sequence to it okay well this is gonna be very interesting sequences of the suspects with the DNA sequence of the hair should be able to find a match. That's what it is. Okay. So. I really do wish they would have done better music for this, though. That's one of my complaints. Oh, excuse me. Okay. So I just have to figure out which piece goes where. Let's go ahead and do Suzanne Moreau. Oh. Oh. Oh, so it's kind of like word search in a way. Okay. 
Okay. Let's see what the next tint is. DNA sequence of the hair mat of the hair matches that of Suzanne. Okay. There it is. Understand. I was sure it would be Clark's hair. I'll have to let him go. Come on, you've got to be kidding me. Well, it makes sense because Suzanne was at the cabin, so yeah, her DNA would be all over the place. Uh. You can leave. Sorry it didn't work out for you, detective. Maybe you should consider a career change. We are not done. Oh, but we are, my dear. We are done. You can kindly piss off. I had no choice but to return to the Armstrong house to arrest Suzanne Moreau. You can kindly piss off? I don't like you. I honestly don't. Now I'm wondering if Hakil Poirot is going to be able to help solve this case. Ouch. Joy. The arrest warrant for Suzanne Moreau. Suzanne was set up by Clark and Noah. They are the kidnappers, but I'm not giving up. When Suzanne comes up for trial, I will fight for her defense. But for now, the district attorney is in charge. If I want to stay a detective, he always has the last word. It's gonna be difficult. I don't wanna do this. I mean, she's an inno semi-innocent. Granted, she did play a bit of a part in it. She was manipulated. Hmm, the door is wide open. How strange. Uh, oh, hi, Lucy. What are you doing out? Hey, is anyone there? Miss Moreau? Oh, I got a bad feeling about Ms. this. Miss Moreau? This is Detective Locke. I got a real bad feeling about this. Don't tell me she's dead. Check her room first. She... Miss Moreau, can you hear me? It's me, Detective Locke. You must get up now. Miss Moreau? Oh no. Oh no. Miss Moreau, can you hear me? Suzanne Moreau is dead. There are no traces of blows or injuries on her body. She doesn't seem to have defended herself from anyone. She... Oh no. It appears Suzanne killed herself by ingesting all these drugs. Got to be something else here. Suzanne's diary is missing. Suzanne was telling the truth about her mother.
She must have realized at last how she'd been used. The death of her mother would have been an additional shock, and the self-righteous court of social media was as quick as usual to try and convict her. I called the district attorney to inform him. This is Detective Locke, sir. I'm at the Armstrong house. Have you arrested Suzanne Moreau? She's dead, sir. Apparent suicide, but I need a forensics team. She killed herself out of remorse for her part in the crime. We don't know that yet. I'm calling forensics now, but I wanted you to know. What a mess. Stay on site until forensics arrive. Yes, sir. Standing by. The investigation was officially closed. I was certain that she was innocent, and Clark had been responsible for four deaths and then vanished into thin air with a million dollars. Dollars marked, though, and not easily spent. I didn't care if the case was officially closed. She still continued. I swore, Mr. Poirot, whatever it took, I would hunt him down. A true detective. So she didn't give up. She went after every single lead that she could get her hands on. I don't blame her for that. I don't blame her at all. Because that's technically four bodies on his hands. I waited for the forensics team then went into the station to write my report. I was officially off the case. Thank you, mademoiselle. That obviously cannot be the completion of your story. If I might ask a question? Of course. Who was Ratchet? Ratchet wasn't Michael Clark. Suzanne Moreau's boyfriend, the one who manipulated her and burned down the cabin, this was Ratchet? No, he was an accomplice. Clark, the phony journalist, was the leader. Michael Clark, the reporter, he was Ratchet? Absolutely. I was the only law enforcement official to question Clark. I knew this wasn't his first kidnapping. You looked for similar cases. What do you Americans call the MMOs? Means, motive, and opportunity. Yes, I looked for someone in plain sight. Someone on the edge of a kidnapping case. Someone in plain view, keeping track of the investigations. An innocent witness, a concerned neighbor, even another reporter. And eventually you found a name behind an alias. Yes, I found a name. Cassetti, the real name. The real name of the man you call Ratchet is Cassetti. This explains much, mademoiselle, but not all. It explains why she is our number one suspect. But not how she came to be on this train. Attends, she has grown pale. I, I don't know what's wrong with me. Excuse me, Mr. Poirot. I don't feel very well. You are exhausted and still feeling the effects of the drug. Stay with us, mademoiselle. One more effort. I need to know your recent movements. I snuck aboard the train. This I observed. You came directly to this room? Yes. Yes, and other than a couple of careful trips to the... the ladies yesterday, I never left this room. I didn't want to be spotted by Ratchet. Yesterday, I, I chatted with my roommate, Miss Schmidt, I think, here in our room. She brought me some dinner. I got very sleepy and nodded off. And now she nods off again. Is this a joke? She must be faking so we can't interrogate her further, Poirot. No, Book. She really seems to have fallen asleep again. It is my fault. She must have been given a dangerous dose of sleeping pills last night. The effects should wear off soon, I hope, but I am afraid asking her to tell us her story was too much for her. Pinch her, Poirot. She's faking. Her eyes are dilated. She is not faking and there will be no pinching. Dr. Constantine, please stay with her. Monsieur Book, ask the other passengers to gather in the dining car. There are still many questions I need to ask. But all of them together? Won't someone overhear your questioning the others? I will speak softly because I am trained to do so. They will speak softly because they want to. Very well. I will do as you say. And 
there we go. Well, that was an interesting chapter. I'm mad. I'm getting very mad, because it's like, yo! Ooh, sorry. Like I said, I'm getting mad. But, anywho, um, this is gonna end this part. We are gonna go ahead and save! I haven't found any golden mush sisters yet. We are going to save. We were... Fi wow, we finished up chapter 5 already? Dag on. And now we are in chapter 6, Connections. We are going through this game extremely quickly. I don't know if I like that or not. But I guess so. I guess that's the way it's gotta be. I'm really enjoying this so far, and I'm definitely enjoying Microid's take on a uh, very classic mystery tale. But anywho, I hope you guys have enjoyed. Also, look out for next week. I am going to be uh, swapping up some of my content a little bit. And I hope y'all will definitely be there to check it out. But without further ado... Please leave a like and subscribe, and I'll catch y'all later. So, later! Bye! Mwah! I love you, all my followers. All my subscribers, I love you.